Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Bailey and I am a registered dietitian. My clinical background is in adult inpatient nutrition with a focus on surgery and solid organ transplantation. Today we are going to discuss the assessment of plant-based protein quality. As a disclosure, I am an employee of Cape Farms. Objectives for today's presentation are an introduction to the plant-based diet, talking about sources of plant-based protein, determining how to assess the quality of protein sources, and bringing this all together into a conclusion on the adequacy and benefits of a plant-based diet and plant-based protein. Plant-based diets focus on foods that come primarily from plants. Plant-based does not always mean vegan, and a plant-based diet may still have sources of animal-based proteins such as dairy, fish, or meat. In speaking about a vegan diet, it's eliminating all animal products, but it could be highly processed and not necessarily plant-based. So when you think about it as a vegan, you might be consuming things such as french fries, cookies, other sources that are vegan, but not necessarily coming from plants. A plant-based diet is emphasizing whole foods. Overall, a plant-based diet seeks to minimize or exclude animal-based proteins. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has a consensus statement that states, it is the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that appropriately planned vegetarian, including vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits for the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. There are many reasons to follow a plant-based diet. Per the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, those who eat a plant-based diet have a lower risk of dying from heart disease when compared to non-vegetarians. Plant-based diets have been proven to prevent and reverse heart disease, improve cholesterol, and lower blood pressure. In addition, plant-based diets prevent, manage, and reverse type 2 diabetes. They help to lower body weight, improve insulin function, and increase a beta cell's ability to regulate blood sugar, which will then reverse symptoms associated with type 2 diabetes. Avoiding animal products and high fat foods while eating plant-based foods can lower the risk of developing certain types of cancer. Common sources of plant-based protein, often what comes to top of mind is soy protein, but more commonly now we're seeing rice protein, pea protein. We're also seeing some lentil and chickpea based food items. We're incorporating chia seed into our diet adding quinoa as a grain, hemp seeds, peanuts, and tree nuts. These all offer really great sources of plant-based protein into the diet and are great when utilized in combination. The protein content of plant-based sources varies greatly depending on the source. For instance, you have chia seeds and hemp seeds, which give you about six grams of protein per two tablespoon serving. Then you have cashews, which offer about four grams per one quarter cup. Here you'll see split peas and green peas vary. So per one cup, split peas have 16 grams of protein and green peas have nine grams of protein. This is in a cooked version of these sources. And it's important to note this because not all peas would offer the same amount of protein depending on the source. And that holds true for all plant-based protein sources. Some nutritional considerations to think about when looking at plant-based protein. Number one, the adequacy of the protein source. Are any essential amino acids missing? If so, how do I accommodate for this? Also, patient outcomes. Can plant protein support muscle synthesis and maintenance in the same way that animal-based proteins do? Most literature on plant-based protein is looking at the whole food source rather than a plant protein isolate. Protein isolates are the separation of protein from its whole food source to create the highest amount of pure protein available. 
Plant-based protein isolates offer concentrated amounts of protein in a smaller quantity compared to its whole food, whole food source. Protein isolates may also be fortified with additional amino acids to provide a complete protein profile. So again, when reading literature and understanding plant-based protein, you want to make sure that you're either reading about the whole food source or the protein isolate to determine the quality of that protein source. And again, looking at the whole food source versus the protein isolate, you can see here that the whole food source of soybeans is offering about 12 grams per ounce, while the protein isolate is giving you 23 grams per ounce. So you're getting a much larger concentration of protein in that isolate source compared to its whole food source counterpart. PDCAS is the gold standard to measure protein quality according to the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization. The PDCAS stands for the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, and it is made up of two components, the amino acid profile of the protein, as well as the digestibility of the protein. The PDCAS represents the final yield of the grams of usable protein, of which is 100% bioavailable. For example, if the PDCAS of a food is 0.8, and one serving of that food contains 10 grams of protein, this would yield 8 grams of protein with a complete amino acid profile that is 100% bioavailable to the body. PDCAS ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being the highest quality. In looking at the chart on the left, you can see that eggs have a PDCAS of 1, or they are the highest quality and the highest number that you can obtain. Other sources such as chicken, fish, or soy have a variance depending on where it is coming from or how it is cooked, and that can range anywhere from a 0.9 up to a 1.0. P offers a 0.89 PDCAS, and again, that can vary on the source, and black beans are around a 0.75. Plant-based protein isolates can also be fortified with additional essential amino acids to improve the PDCAS. And it's important then to read labels and understand the entire nutrient profile of that item in order to determine if the protein source is adequate. This gives you a visualization of how added amino acids can improve PDCAS. At the top, we have our reference pattern for amino acids. And here, this is a complete amino acid profile. On the second line, we have amino acids in a protein isolate at baseline. The limiting factor here is the sulfur amino acids, methionine and cysteine. When they are added from another source, as shown in the third line, this can actually improve PDCAS. So by adding in methionine and cysteine from another source, you can then improve the PDCAS of that protein that you're looking at. Digestion of plant-based protein. All protein is going through the same digestive pathway in the GI tract. Protein degradation and synthesis happen continuously in the cells. So the body is constantly breaking down proteins and building new ones, often known as protein turnover. So to form the new proteins after they've been broken down, amino acids sit in a pool in the body and can be pulled from that pool at any time to create the amino acid profile that is needed. It was once commonly believed that all amino acids needed to be consumed at every meal for proper absorption and utilization. However, in knowing that this pool exists, it is now known that amino acids or proteins can be consumed in varying amounts throughout the day to provide the body with its dietary requirements that it needs. In conclusion, PDCAS is the gold standard for measuring and assessing protein quality. Plant-based protein is a high quality source of protein and all proteins are digested and utilized by the body in the same way, regardless of source. A healthful plant-based diet can provide adequate amounts of protein with all the essential amino acids. These are my references for this presentation. 
This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen and supported with an educational grant through Kate Farms. For further information, please visiting the following sites. Thank you for listening to today's presentation about the assessment of the quality of plant-based protein.